everybody, Nigel Saunders here. Today is a really cold day and it's about as close as I'll ever get to living on Mars. I've got the Mars Project out here in the greenhouse to subject it to some extreme cold temperatures. Last night we got a low of minus 16 degrees Celsius and it's supposed to get even colder in the next few days. It can get as high as 20 degrees Celsius for a surface temperature on Mars. So even though the atmosphere is really thin, it is possible that some life form could survive, maybe moss or lichen. Today I'll be finishing the miniature Mars landscape. I'll be planting some moss and some trees and we'll see how they grow. I hope you join me for what's not the end of the Mars series, but just the beginning here in the Boneside Zone. I'll bring the Mars project inside from the cold into the plant room and I'll begin today's work. I'm back inside now. Quite a change in temperature and humidity. Today in the plant room, it's 23 degrees Celsius and 80% humidity. After making the Mars soil, I couldn't help but notice it looks an awful lot like lava rock. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. This is the lava rock that Michael gave me, and this is the Martian soil that I made up. My Martian soil is just a little bit lighter in color, and the lava rock's just a little darker. I looked up the chemical composition of the two soils, and the lava rock is very similar to the Martian soil. It matches almost everything. It just maybe has a little more titanium. The lava rock is a mixture of gray type stones and red type stones. So I'm, I'm going to separate the two. So I'll just crush up the red type into a powder and I'll use that as my Martian dust. I'll spread the soil out. And then any of the gray stones I'll put in this container and use them for another project. I've got my lava rock all sorted now. This is my red stuff. And here's the gray stones that I picked out. And there's a few white ones in there too. So the next job is to crush this up into a powder and then I'll put the powder across the landscape. I'm not sure how I should go about crushing this lava rock up. Um, I can use pliers and crush each piece, which would be quite time consuming. Does a good job, but uh, yeah, takes a lot of time. I could try crushing some in a plastic bag. I'll try that, put some stones in. It's pretty tough stuff. works quite well. I don't know how long this bag will last though. I think the hammering is probably the way to go. It's a little bit messy and I got quite a variety of sizes. I get some big chunks and fine powder and sort of a mixture of sizes but I think it'll look quite good. I think uh, I think that'll be a, a good thing in the end. I'm switching to crushing the lava rock in this old pot. It's working quite well. A few rocks flying up, so make sure you have glasses on. So I'll pour it out. Here comes the dust now. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. It's looking quite realistic. I've used up all the lava rock. 
You can still see some of the perlite showing through here under my Mars soil section. So I'll pick that out by hand. I don't want white perlite showing. Even though I think when I water it, you know, the iron oxide will probably stain it eventually to a, an iron color. So it wouldn't show up very much, but uh, I'll try and pick it out. I'll place the Mars Rover back on the Martian landscape now. Here's a view of the landscape now. It's looking very Mars-like. So there's the area for planting the trees and moss. This is the rocky area under the rover. Nice dust underneath the rover, Curiosity rover. You can see the color of the Curiosity blends in nicely with the landscape now. After all the work getting my landscape ready, it's finally now time to plant the trees. I've been thinking a lot about the planting of this Martian landscape and I'm, I'm thinking just the one tree would look good. I don't want it to look too lush and green. So I was thinking just planting the desert rose kind of here to kind of counterbalance the Curiosity Rover and put a little bit of moss around this sort of green zone so the rest of the landscape still looks like Mars. So it'll kind of show the, you know, the greening of Mars maybe a thousand years in the future or something. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll just plant the one little tree here. The first step will be to get the desert rose out of the pot and out of this earth soil. So this is a cutting. You can see there's not a lot of roots on it. But there's some. So we don't want to disturb the roots. I just want to remove the old soil. like that. And we'll put it in as a cutting into the new soil. So I'll dig a little hole back here. Okay, I, I think that's quite good. And I'll plant the desert rose in here. So that is in the Martian soil. And we'll cover it up. These are quite large sized stones in here. So hopefully it'll do well. We'll see. Another advantage of just planting one little tree is if it doesn't survive, I can replace it, try something else. I don't want to plant an entire forest and then have it all just die. But I, I think just having the one tree kind of shows it off more. It, it, everything's kind of red and it really draws your eyes to this green plant because it looks almost totally out of place. All right, let's go out front and see how that looks. I'm liking the composition. I think it just needs a little bit of moss. I've got some small bits of moss that I stole from another tree. And I'll just kind of, um, I'm gonna put some back by the rock here. And a little bit in the foreground. If this moss survives it'll spread and uh, make this green zone a little greener. Okay so that's looking pretty good. I think we're all ready to miss the planting. If this was actually Mars you would get snow first and then as the planet slowly warms up you would start to get more and more rain. But I'll just use rain for now. So here I go a very light misting. The first time it's rained on my Mars landscape. I will give the Mars landscape a better watering. It's uh, quite dry. I'm just adding a little bit of fertilizer to the water. OK, 
give that a bit of a shake like that and then we can water the landscape I'm giving the Mars landscape a better watering because the particle sizes are so large so here I go It'll kind of wash the dust off the top of my rocks too. And I think that'll just about do it. I'm very happy how my Mars landscape turned out. I think it looks pretty good and it's very unique. That's all the work I'll be doing on my Martian landscape today. It's time now for today's update. Today's update is my tamarind bonsai. I started this from a seed last winter and it's been growing nice and strong since. I planted about 150 seeds and only one germinated. So here it is today. The trunk is getting quite woody now and I think the tree's strong enough that in a couple of weeks I'll do its first repotting and some root pruning to try and get that nice radial root spread. The sun is getting nice and strong, shining in the south facing windows now. So in a couple more weeks, I'll be doing a lot of repotting, pruning roots and stuff on lots of different tropical trees. It's time now for today's viewers picks. Dave has sent in pictures of his jade bonsai. Dominic from Montreal, Canada has sent in pictures of his coprosoma bonsai and his ficus microcarpa bonsai. Joff from Australia has sent in pictures of his Portulacaria afroforest. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the Mars Project series. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.